Hello everyone, my name is Lania Tawanganivalu and my presentation will be on dopamine influence on behavior change in fruit flies. Dopamine levels in fruit flies have been linked to a number of specific mutations that have influenced acquired and learned behavior. Increased dopamine levels have altered normal behavior patterns in that they have been found to promote male-male courtship and have also led to a decrease in offspring larval locomotion. The purpose of my research is to identify locomotion activity in offspring of fruit fly with different dopamine levels through several generations. To begin this experiment, a trend or relationship would have to be established by first identifying what concentration of dopamine influences the inverse relationship of dopamine level and locomotion activity between parent and offspring. Then once the trend has been identified, the next goal would be to mutate larvae given a specific measure of locomotion. Completing the task of mutating larvae for specific locomotion activity will be derived from the relationship identified in the previous task. Um, ultimately, however, the major focus is to identify the boundary at which dopamine level merely influences locomotion activity. Therefore, my research goal is to identify the boundary at which dopamine influence influences different uh, locomotion activity, as previously stated, and to also examine dopamine influence in carbolactones lactones and determine the behavior it initiates. So to understand this research, I must first know what dopamine is, which by definition, dopamine is a neurotransmitter made by the body. It is used by the nervous system to send messages between nerve cells, so therefore it's sometimes also called a chemical messenger. Um, dopamine plays a huge role in how we feel, um, in how we feel pleasure uh, to be specific, and it's also a big part of our unique human ability uh, to be able to think and plan. So important functions of dopamine include the fact that um, it is an important chemical messenger in the brain um, involved with reward, motivation, memory, attention, and regulating body movement. Dopamine levels in the prefrontal cortex help working memory. Um, reduced dopamine in prefrontal cortex leads to attention deficit disorder, and low dopamine receptor binding um, found in, are found in individuals that have social anxiety or phobia. So the major dopamine pathways in the brain are involved in motor control, motivation, and reward, as previously stated. And dopamine neurons are found to be more concentrated within the ventral tegmental area of the brain, um, in the prefrontal cortex, the nucleus accumbens, um, the hippocampus, um, as well as the striatum. Uh, these are all important uh, locations in which dopamine um, majorly functions um, and where it carries out its pathways. So as for the structure of dopamine, it is an organic chemical of the catecholamine and uh, phenethylamine families. Dopamine, it constitutes about 80% of the catecholamine content in the brain, and um, it is an amine synthesized by removing a carboxyl group from the molecule of its precursor, which is the L-DOPA. Uh, L-DOPA is synthesized in the brain and kidneys. Um, dopamine is a neurotransmitter that is synthesized in the brain itself, and that is because it cannot pass through the blood-brain barrier. So instead, the precursor to dopamine, aldopa, passes into the brain from the blood and is synthesized into dopamine and into other catecholamines. So in the beginning step, phenylalanine hydroxylase converts phenylalanine to tyrosine, then tyrosine hydroxylase converts tyrosine to aldopa, L-DOPA is converted to dopamine by aromatic amino acid decarboxylase, and then the dopamine can subsequently be converted to epinephrine or norepinephrine. The rate limiting step here, however, is the tyrosine hydroxylase. So now that we know what dopamine is, I will now be introducing my dopamine resource that I use um, in this research and this study. And Within this research, I used um, cobble lactones from 
derived from the kava plant. Now kava is a plant that is grown mainly in the South Pacific Islands. Um, it is used there mainly as a traditional drink or it could be used for herbal or medicinal purposes. So kava lactones is a class of lactone compounds extracted from the kava shrub. It is scientifically proven to contain higher concentrations of dopamine, which is why it is my dopamine resource. As previously stated, um, kava lactones is a lactone compound found in kava plant. Um, currently, kava lactones are under research for potential to have various psychotropic effects. However, effects have long been determined uh, before this, but research is just um, underway to further enhance this study. Effects of kava include muscle relaxation, sleepiness, and, and feeling of well-being. However, long-term use of kava can lead to a range of healthy problem of health problems, um, including malnutrition, weight loss, and apathy. Kava pyrones are responsible for effects on the brain. Um, it reduces anxiety, protects neurons from damage, it reduces pain sensation, and the risk of cancer, which is determined from um, a study that was done in mice. Um, kava lactones have also been found to affect neurotransmitters such as dopamine and gamma aminobutyric acid. So in this slide, I'll be talking more about fruit flies. Um, scientifically, fruit flies are called Drosophila melanogaster. Um, by now, I'm sure we all know what fruit flies are. They are found embedded on surfaces of overripe fruits um, or meat of decaying organic matter. So Drosophila melanogaster or fruit flies are classified within the phylum Arthropoda. Um, their class is Insecta, order Diptera, and their genus is Drosophila. So how does dopamine activity influence fly behavior? Well, they have been researched and studies have concluded that it does influence male-male courtship. Um, it does alter locomotion activity between parents and offspring. It regulates arousal in fruit flies and it also promotes risk-taking behavior. So as for the materials and equipment, I'll be talking about equipments first. Um, so I used microwaves, incubators, beakers, um, and then just other small equipment such as graduated cylinders. Um, However, my main material, of course, was the fruit flies, and I had um, two different types, the wild type um, and the ebony type, which were dopamine mutants. Um, and of course, the vials to keep the fruit flies in, and then I also made the fly food, which was made out of cornmeal, yeast, bacto agar, uh, granulated, granulated sugar, uh, propionic propionic acid, and um, I also had to get the kava powder, which I had to have to buy and get it shipped from the South Pacific. As for the methods I used, um, I broke them up according to the tests that um, I was um, conducting at that time. So first I prepared the fly food and I also prepared the concentrations of the kava powder, which I chose 100 milligrams, 300 milligrams, and 500 milligrams of kava. Um, it was prepared and left for several days for the food to solidify and for the kava extracts to uh, fully be saturated within the fly food. Um, then I prepared the wild type flies, um, six vials of 100 and 300 milligram kava concentrations were prepared and then the fly food were added to these vials. Six vials of controls were also prepared which had no kava lactones. Um, five male and five female wild type fruit flies were placed into each vial and then they were observed for several days. As for the ebony flies, I only did three vials of 100, 300, and 500 milligram kava concentrations, um, and then flew uh, to the uh, 
to the flat food that I had previously made. Um, the three vials of control were also prepared. Again, these had no kava or no kava lactones. Again, five female and five male ebony fruit flies um, that were contained in each vial, and they were also left to be observed for several days. As for the light assay, um, male and female flies were introduced into dark settings um, and they were timed for how long the, the fly remained in light. Now for my results, the observations that I, that I made with the wild type flies and the ebony flies, which were the dopamine mutants, um, were observed within a period of almost 30 days almost a month, uh, but the light assay was done within um, one day um, that I did the research. Now, as for the observations within wild type fruit flies, as seen within the graph, the yellow corresponds to the 100 milligram concentration, um, the red to the 300 milligram concentration, and then the dark, the dark red represents the control. Um, Observations were made on the 12th day, 22nd day, and 26th day within me actually putting the wild type fruit flies in the food. Um, so mortality rate depleted as time went on, which was to be expected. Uh, the flies in 100 milligram concentration survived better. Um, the 300 milligram concentration mortality rate was less than 100 milligram, but better than the control, which to me almost it was something new as I was expecting the 300 milligram concentration to have a higher mortality rate. And the flies in carbolactone concentration um, did have a higher mortality rate compared to the control, um, which once again was to be expected as they had higher dopamine concentrations. As for the ebony fruit flies or the dopamine mutants in this case, I decided to make concentrations of 100, 300, and 500 milligrams, and then of course the control. Um, these observations were made within 15 days. Um, they were made on the 5th day, 10th day, and the 15th day. So 500 milligram concentration was at a constant rate during all observation days. Uh, both the 100 milligram and 300 milligram concentrations were also at a constant rate. However, on average, the 300 milligram concentration contained the highest mortality rate. And although it seemed to be at a constant, the controls were slightly lower when averaged, um, which validated um, or at least in my opinion, validated this, um, this test as I expected the flies with the uh, dopamine concentrations to be higher in mortality. Now, after making the previous observations, I also decided to make a light assay. Um, in this assay, uh, both male and female fruit flies were placed in dark setting. Um, they were given five minutes to freely, uh, to freely adapt to their, to their environment. And then after the five minutes were over, they were given 10 minutes time frame of being observed in which um, I observed whether they decided to stay in the dark or came out into the light. Now, um, the flies were timed on length of light exposure. An average of three runs were taken and placed into the table as seen here uh, below. Um, now the 100 milligram concentration in male was at 74 seconds, the female at 15.5. Um, the 300 milligram seemed to have um, flies that spent the most amount of time in light with male at 87 seconds and female at 47 seconds. Um, 500 milligram, however, um, were at 12 seconds in male and 74 seconds in female. The control did have the lowest amount of flies in light, um, with male averaging 11.75 seconds and female at 23 seconds. Um, so within this light essay, the 300 milligram concentration contained the flies that spent the most amount of time in light. So because this um, study, this research is what um, 
my honors thesis topic is. I am still currently in the experimentation stage and um, I'm currently conducting several tests that I do not have results for yet, so there are more results to follow. So conclusion is that I was able to make um, from these results um, include that evidence of couple lactones increasing dopamine concentration in flies. Um, the flies in 100 milligram concentration survived better um, in the wild type observation. Flies in 300 milligram concentration survived better in the ebony um, observation. Um, and the flies in 300 milligram concentration spent more time in light. So as I stated before, I am currently still in my experimenta uh, experimentation stage. Um, so I am currently running behavioral tests to measure dopamine concentrations in flies. I'm observing larval locomotion in different concentrations of flies. And I'm also observing for male-male courtship behavior. Attached here are the references that I used within this specific PowerPoint presentation um, in the information that I got from dopamine, carbolactones, and the fruit flies. Thank you so much for taking your time to watch through my presentation. Um, I hope it was very informative, and I also hope that you enjoyed it.